Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. My family and I will continue coming back here, and we will continue fighting for my brother. They were supposed to get closure months ago, but instead the Gallegos family is dealing with delays in the deadly drunk driving case that killed 44 year old Gabriel Gallegos. The defendant Mariana Campos Jimenez was only 20 when she was arrested for intoxication manslaughter. Erica Hernandez explains how it seems her high powered defense attorney has been able to keep her out of jail. Mariana Campos Jimenez hiding from our cameras time and time again as she enters and exits the 437th District Court. Campos Jimenez in May 2020 was allegedly driving the wrong way on Loop 1604 and Lock Hill Selmo Road when she caused a head-on crash that killed Gabriel Gallegos. My family is not looking for anything outside of justice. Gabriel's brother Gino Gallegos says he and his family are frustrated. Campos Jimenez's case was supposed to conclude this past summer after she agreed to a plea deal, but then before sentencing on September 19th, her attorney withdrew the plea. That attorney, Jerry Goldstein, one of the top defense lawyers in the state. You have a defense attorney that has stepped in front of a judge and in effect advised the judge that he was inept in the counsel he gave his client. And as a result of him stating that, um, we went from going to sentencing to now effectively starting all over. After that hearing, Judge Joel Perez ordered a trial to start immediately. It was supposed to begin this week, but now Goldstein has ordered a psych evaluation for Campos Jimenez, something the court has to grant. The tactics that are being used by um, Goldstein, um, Mariana's attorney, I feel like I feel like her parents are trying to buy a not guilty verdict in this case. Now the Gallegos family waits again, and while Campos Jimenez remains out on bond, they continue to fight for justice. It's not cheap parlor tricks. It's not using loopholes within the law to try and have your client beat a case. That's not justice. Her having to face accountability for killing my brother, that would be justice. Until that psych evaluation is done, this case remains on hold. But Judge Bettis did order for it to take place as soon as possible so he could set a trial date. If and when Campos Jimenez does go to trial, if she's found guilty, she faces up to 20 years in prison. Erica Hernandez, Case at 12 News. Congressman Henry Cuellar back at work in D.C. today after a carjacking a mile away from Capitol Hill last night. The Democratic congressman from Laredo says he was headed home when this happened. U.S. Capitol Police, which is leading the investigation, says Cuellar told investigators that three masked men swarmed his vehicle, put guns in his face, and demanded his keys. I do have a black belt, but I uh, recognize when you got three uh, three guns. Uh, I looked at one with a gun, another one with a gun, a third one behind me. Uh, so they said they wanted my car. I said, sure, you got to keep calm in those, those situations. And then they took off. Cuellar's car was later found abandoned. The Capitol Police Chief says they have a number of leads. And tonight, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has been voted out of that job, a first in U.S. history. Representative McCarthy was ousted by a vote of 216 to 210. Eight Republicans voted to remove him as well as a majority of House Democrats. No House Speaker has ever been voted out of the position through the passage of a resolution. The House will now have to elect a new Speaker. No word yet on when that vote will be or who will be nominated for it. McCarthy, by the way, could run again. Tonight, San Antonio police making an arrest in a deadly stabbing from nearly six months ago. Bear County jail records show 34 year old Whitney Carraway charged with the murder of Amanda Newton back in May. The stabbing happened at the Hamilton Place Apartments on Jackson Keller Road. Witnesses said Carraway and Newton were having an argument in the street before that stabbing. The arrest affidavit states video evidence showed the confrontation between the two women. The affidavit did not say the cause of the argument. Carraway's bond set up more than $200,000. In Guadalupe County, more than 30 people arrested in a narcotics investigation. According to Seguin Police, most of the people were arrested on various drugs and firearms charges, but at least one man is facing three counts of aggravated kidnapping. Law enforcement also recovered more than $65,000 in stolen property. Police say more arrests are expected. 
hit and left tonight. San Antonio police trying to find the driver who hit and killed a man near downtown. Happened about 830 last night near I-35 and South Laredo Street to south of downtown. According to officers, someone driving by found the man in the middle of the road. The driver then stopped to call police. SAPD says someone hit the man with their vehicle and didn't stop. The victim pronounced dead at the scene. No description of the suspect's vehicle has been released. San Antonio police also investigating after a man was found shot along the side of a road. That shooting happened just before midnight on Sahara Drive near San Pedro and Highway 281. Officers say the man was found by someone who was driving by that area. According to SAPD, that man would not tell officers how or why he was shot. He was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. She's a state representative. She's also a survivor, a survivor of domestic violence. Representative Josie Garcia is the speaker this week for Bear County's Collaborative Commission on Domestic Violence Symposium. She sat down with our Courtney Friedman for a raw conversation about stripping away shame and allowing survivors to thrive. It's part of Courtney's series, Loving in Fear. Some of um, my earliest memories are of my mother being severely beaten. I would take my sister and we would run out into the middle of the night, hide underneath trailers, hide in a ditch. State Representative Josie Garcia is no longer keeping secrets inside. I'm 46 years old and it's, it's just been over the past few years that I've had the courage to lift up the veil of shame. Sharing her story of abuse with other legislators has tipped the scale for domestic violence related bills. Quite a few legislators that had admitted to me that they would not have voted in support support of, of a particular bill had it not been for my personal testimony. She says revealing the truth has been liberating. It's really hard to be that vulnerable and share the ugly, but it's so rewarding to see a glimmer of hope in somebody else's eyes. That's why she agreed to be the main speaker at this year's Collaborative Commission on Domestic Violence Symposium. People tune in from all over the country to hear the latest on local domestic violence response and advocacy. A really important part of the symposium is whether you're tuning in on your phone or the computer, if you are ready to reach out for help or need resources, there is a full team waiting to help you. So beautiful that you turn into this symposium and you get moved to ask for help, you get the courage to seek help, this is the time. The time to realize that when you're ready, open arms will guide you to a safer, stronger future. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. The Domestic Violence Symposium is virtual again this year, allowing more people to participate. It runs this Thursday and Friday, Friday October 5th and 6th. You can register on the Collaborative Commission's website. We have that link on KSAT.com. Police in San Marcos are searching for an 18 year old accused of shooting and killing a man over the weekend. San Marcos police say that Ray Robert Sines Jr. shot and killed a man outside of an apartment complex on Highway 123 around 2 a.m. on Saturday. Investigators believe that Sines is armed and dangerous. Anyone who has any information is asked to call San Marcos Crime Stoppers. That number is 1-800-824 tips over to Arlington now where a plane had to make an emergency landing in the middle of the road. According to the FAA, two people on board. Both of them are OK. Police closed that road for several hours to try to get things cleaned up and get that plane out of there. Both the FAA and the National Trans <clears throat> National Transportation Safety Board are investigating what led up to that emergency landing. Look outside with live cam this evening. We are getting closer to some better rain chances and that cold front, Adam Cask. Yeah, better rain chances and some cooler air around the corner. You still need a bit of patience for all that. We have some clouds out there today, but nothing dropping any rain at the moment. We had a few light showers in parts of the hill country earlier, but look at the temperatures, high temperatures. 90s for the vast majority of us. Rock Springs an exception with a high of 84. Here in San Antonio, 96. That's 10 degrees above average. The average high is 86. Average low is 65. We haven't come close to that in a long time. That will be changing, however, and we will drop below average in the days ahead. Get ready for some cooler air, but have some patience for it. We'll talk about how much cooler and, of course, more about the rain in just a minute. 118 can too many of those. Thanks, Adam. Let's take a look at 410 and Calabra here. You can see a big backup, which we have been watching over the last 10 minutes or so. It has gotten heavier. Looks like this is in the eastbound lanes. Traffic there being uh, 
lessened down to just two lanes because of that pillar there. It looks like behind that pillar, there are the cars that were involved in an accident. So very slow going as traffic merges there because of this lane closure and wreck at 410 at Calabria. We have some KSAT news we want to share right now. Looking ahead on KSAT 12 starting Monday, Good Morning San Antonio will air from 5 to 7 a.m. on weekday mornings. We're going to continue to share stories that matter to you and your family, but it's at a time that works better for you. So be sure to tune in bright and early for all your breaking overnight news, traffic, weather authority forecasts on GMSA weekdays from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. You can watch it live on KSAT 12 or wherever you stream your news. A St. Mary's Law School student taken into custody in front of KSAT cameras outside court. It is the latest legal entanglement for Melanie Hagner, who last year accused her ex-boyfriend of kidnapping her and burglarizing her home. This spring, KSAT investigates exposed some massive flaws in the criminal case, and all charges against Hagner's ex were rejected by prosecutors. That man's attorney says the dismissal and subsequent protective order filed against her hasn't kept Hackner out of his client's life. Because she is legally sophisticated, she knows she can use the courts to get around protective orders to force him to have time with her. And it's really a travesty that our system is used in that way. Coming up in just a few minutes, the criminal charge that led to Hagner being put in handcuffs, plus her unkind words for a case at photojournalist while she was being taken to jail. Hey, coming up, we're just a few days away from the annular eclipse. After the break, we're going to have some helpful tips to protect your camera lens if you're hoping to get a photo of it. The San Antonio ISD's right-sizing plans have students and parents wondering why their schools are being targeted, why they say they should stay open, and what's being done with bond money that was allocated for those schools in question. Talk about it tonight on the night beat. Hundreds of students in Northeast and Northside ISD schools disciplined for THC vaping last school year. A new stricter state law could mean those numbers will get worse. Case that investigates just how bad vaping has gotten in some schools and what districts are doing to try to discourage it. We are 11 days away from the annular or ring of fire solar eclipse. Throughout that eclipse, you're going to need those eye protection, those glasses to look at the sun. Yeah, but what if you want to take a picture? Which a lot of people do. They do. Jonathan Coto shows you how to protect your camera as well. On October 14th, those in direct path of the solar eclipse from Oregon to Texas will have the opportunity to witness an event that won't happen again for decades. San Antonio is ideally placed to see the maximum eclipse. Astronomer and eclipse expert Doug Duncan says an annular solar eclipse is unique because the moon's orbit around the Earth is not a perfect circle. It's a little bit oval, so it can be further away and look a little smaller. And on October 14, it's going to be a little too small to totally cover the sun. And so it leaves a ring of fire. And of course, if you don't share the eclipse on social media, did it even happen? Everybody likes to take pictures with their phones. But if you want to take a picture of the sun, you got to protect your phone camera. Duncan invented a filter to do just that. It's called the Solar Snap. He partnered with American Paper Optics. No matter what device you use, here's the key to protecting your camera. When you want to look at the sun, glasses for you. When you want to take pictures of the sun, you put the little filter on your phone, and then you look at your phone screen, just like you would taking any ordinary picture. Both Duncan and Jarrett say you must wear a pair of safe solar eclipse glasses in order to avoid eye damage during an eclipse, so regular sunglasses won't cut it. These have to be ISO and CE certified, so when you go and purchase yours online and have any doubts, they say just buy American. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. We are your Eclipse Authority on Saturday, October 14th, beginning at 9 a.m. We have coverage of the Eclipse right here on KSAT. If you want to see more of our stories leading up to that event, just scan the QR code on your screen right now. Kind of wild to think about, but that event is just sort of the, the primer, the yeah. appetizer for what's coming in April 
Adam. Yeah, and save your glasses or your viewers, whatever you have for April, because that's the total solar eclipse that's going to be coming on April 8th. And you can also use a pinhole projector here in uh, Science with Sarah tomorrow at 9 a.m. She's going to be doing this with some kids. She's going to teach you how to make this and then safely view the eclipse because you can't look directly at it with your naked eye. Even the best sunglasses in the world won't help you. You can still burn your retina and burn your eye very quickly and easily because it's not a total solar eclipse. This is a ring of fire. It's almost total, 90%, but even that 10%, that can be enough to do eye damage. All right, let's take a look at the graphic here. This is coming up Saturday, October 14th. 11.53 a.m., you see the, 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 the peak of the eclipse there in the hill country moves into San Antonio. Lasts about four minutes around San Antonio. You don't have to leave town. If you want it to last a little bit longer, get in that center line, Utopia, Hondo, Divine, Pleasanton. But you don't have to leave town for it. And again, you do need the special glasses. And they do have expiration dates. They typically last several years. But if you have them from the eclipse that was at six or seven years ago, that partial eclipse, Double check the expiration date because they do expire. You don't want to take chances with those glasses. Even if they're scratched or torn, you can have some issues. Anyway, high temperature trend. Look at the changes coming our way. Still 90s again tomorrow, mid 90s, mid 80s, Thursday and Friday. By Saturday and Sunday, we're down into the mid to upper 70s. So you've been hearing about this Thursday cold front. Doesn't mean we're going to have the cooler temperatures Thursday or even Friday. They hold off until this upcoming weekend. Notice the cooler air starting to form. This is that cold front developing 60s throughout the Dakotas and even some 50s and 40s in Montana and Wyoming. That's part of that cooler air mass that's going to be headed our way. The initial cold front not going to have a big temperature or humidity change. A secondary push of that cooler air is going to usher in that taste of fall. Morning low temperatures could dip down into the upper 50s by Sunday and Monday at sunrise. Assuming that verifies, it'd be the coolest morning temperatures since May 1st. That's quite a long time. Not much on the radar locally today. I do want to point out or closer to Houston and in Houston today. That's where they had some persistent heavy rainfall and flash flooding with some of that some street flooding. West Texas, a few pop up downpours this afternoon. Upper level trough we're still watching as that's going to be helping to swing the cold front through. Thursday's our day. Tomorrow, a 20% chance. By Thursday, we get up to a 70% chance. We think the rain will periodically be fairly widespread. Don't expect to wake up to rain on Thursday or it to rain all day. You'll be able to get outside and uh, do some activities. Just periodically, we'll have a numerous showers and thunderstorms moving through our area. And then by Thursday night, and especially Friday, Friday morning, it should be well south of the KSAT 12 viewing area. And I think Friday is going to be generally sunny. Let's talk dew points because that's another change here. We'll finally have a taste of crisp air. Dew point now 66. We have the humidity dew points even near 70 in many locations. The humidity is not going to quickly drop behind this front. It's not going to be until about kickoff for Friday night football and big game coverage when the humidity drops and by this weekend, oh, that crisp air, lack of humidity, it'll be here. 75 in the morning tomorrow, 94 by the afternoon, a 20% chance of a few showers, 90s across the board. It's this weekend you'll really notice the changes. Mm -hmm. Bring them on. Thanks, Adam. All right, it was a disappointing end to the regular season for the Rangers, but Mary, boy, did they rebound today. They rebounded today, but man, I'm sure that regular season finish still sings, stings considering they led the division for most of the year. But yes, the Rangers win their AL wildcard series opener in shutout fashion. Now one win away from a divisional matchup against Baltimore. And we hear from the man himself, Spurs guard Devin Vassell after inking a massive extension on the first day of camp. The MLB wildcard round is underway, and while most of you were at work, the Texas Rangers matched up against Tampa Bay in St. Peter's, Florida.
Petersburg, Florida, excuse me, for game one of a best of three. Second inning, Josh Young at the plate with runners at the corners. The sack fly brings in Nate Lowe, and just like that, the Rangers lead 1-0. It's now 2-0 in the sixth with two on. Tampa Bay's afternoon riddled with sloppy play and errors. Corey Seager, line drive to center, brings in two runs after this errant throw to third. And that's how it would end. Texas wins game one in shutout fashion, 4-0. to zero. Jordan Montgomery threw five Ks in seven scoreless innings, allowing just six hits. The Rangels will go for the sweep tomorrow with first pitch at 208 here on KSAT 12. After the game, Rangers manager Bruce Bochy talked about what it was like facing Rays right-hander Tyler Glass now. You have to look who we're facing. He's got really good stuff. He's got a big fastball and great uh, breaking stuff along with uh, the change up. So, yeah, you're not expecting to hit you know, a lot of home runs when you're facing a pitcher like that. And, um, he did a great job of keeping the game in check. We had some other chances to add on, but, uh, you know, they did a good job of keeping that game close. There he is, Spurs guard Devin Vassell, who put ink to paper on a massive rookie scale contract extension as San Antonio hit the court for day one of training camp. The 23-year-old's five-year, $146 million deal is indicative of his steady growth in the NBA and the franchise's commitment to its exciting young core. It's a blessing, for sure. Uh, this is where I want to be. Um, and all I'm trying to do is win, taste tries and winning, get championships, put some more banners up here. So I'm glad that the organization has faith in me and, you know, I'm just ready to win. Vassell is the sixth of his class to sign an extension. The 2020 class includes stars like Anthony Edwards, LaMelo Ball, Tyrese Halliburton, Isaiah Stewart and Desmond Bain. A bye as early as week five turned out to be perfectly timed for the UTSA football team who came out of its non-conference schedule with a less than ideal one and three record. But it's not too late to turn things around. The Roadrunners make their AAC debut this weekend against Temple and the team is optimistic given its proven track record in conference play. UTSA is dealing with injuries to key players, but coach Jeff Trailer is keeping practices physical. Inconsistent football teams don't get taken care of during practice. They got to practice harder. We're airing on the edge of physicality right now, not, not on the uh, the side of um, being too careful. It's too early in the year. I mean, our last three years we've had bye weeks, you know, week nine, so different kind of mindset. But we're not a real good football team right now, and um, we've got to get better. So we got to practice and, and get physical. And you, you don't stop the run by not being physical and you don't run the football without being physical. Fans will like to hear that. UTSA kicks off against the Owls at Lincoln Financial Field this Saturday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Thank you, Mary. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm not going to quote Olivia Newton-John at 6 o'clock. So <laughs> we'll Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. It's a concession I make. Up next, a St. Mary's Law student accuses her boyfriend of kidnapping her and burglarizing her home. But months after those charges were rejected, she's the one in handcuffs. After the break, KSAT investigates Melanie Hagner's recent history of arrests and why an attorney says she's weaponizing the law.